This is Talk at 10 with Raf Gangert on 93.6 Ram FM. Good morning, uh, Wissam, and welcome to the program. Good morning, Raf. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, early in the program, I spoke uh, to Melanie T- uh, Takafman uh, from the Association for Civil Rights in Israel, especially about a certain checkpoint uh, from Jericho to the Dead Sea. Uh, it's called the Beit Harava Security Crossing. Uh, they claim that it does not serve Israel's security, and in fact, it's there for economic reasons. Uh, what's your view on this checkpoint? Well, first of all, I'd like to commend uh, Acri from on behalf of Al Haq on their work and the initiative that they've taken. And this case that they've taken represents uh, just a, a small drop in the bucket against uh, the occupation, but a very important one. And uh, this particular case, thankfully, was, uh, was successful. But the reasons for that, uh, we have to understand that it was because of the fact that there was an initiative from some of the representatives of the Israeli occupation forces that uh, came forward and explicitly stated that this checkpoint is not for security reasons, but rather to serve the economic interest of the illegal Israeli settlers. Well, the matter, I mean, uh, we understand now is in the court, and um, the court will uh, decide. But now let's move on as a Palestinian uh, human rights organization. Can you add to this issue that that not all checkpoints are there for security reasons, and can you substantiate your claim uh, factually? Well, first and foremost, Al-Haq's position is that these checkpoints, movement restrictions in general, um, they're one of the most pervasive and destructive features of the Israeli occupation, and they violate the human rights of the Palestinian people every day. In addition to the humiliation and degradation suffered by the Palestinian people at the checkpoints, the restrictions also severely disrupt, if not totally deny, their access to work, health care, and education. And what this case illustrates is that these checkpoints, roadblocks, and other obstacles are not for security reasons. Rather, they are a means to annexation of more and more Palestinian territory and further and further control and harassment and humiliation of the Palestinian people. Now, these can be substantiated simply by looking at the location and the various nature of these uh, obstacles and, and checkpoints that the Israeli occupation forces used. Well, uh, well, we saw early in the program, I read out a statement uh, that was issued uh, to us uh, by the IDF, and I'd like to read uh, just the opening uh, paragraph of the statement for you, for you to comment as well. Uh, the IDF says the network of security crossings in the West Bank was erected in response to the extreme uh, terrorist uh, threat and the violence during the Second Intifada. These security crossings enable the state to curb the smuggling of weapons and the infiltration of suicide bombers into Israeli cities and towns, and... And they say that now that the degree of violence has ebbed, the presence and location of these crossings are under review. And the, since the beginning of March of this year, the IDF has dismantled roughly 80 security crossings in the West Bank. What's your comment on this? Well, this is uh, the typical response from the Israeli Occupation Authority is the issue of security is trumps all. And in their argument of addressing their security, they fail to acknowledge the rights of the Palestinian people. These checkpoints and obstacles to movement are located throughout the West Bank, separating Palestinian from Palestinian. Yet they ensure the free movement for illegal settlers located in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. And these checkpoints, if you're able to pass through one of them, you can clearly see that it's not for security reasons, because these checkpoints are manned by Israeli occupation soldiers that arbitrarily decide whether or not to delay someone, whether or not to check an ID, and more than anything, they create an environment for the Palestinians that makes it very difficult for them to be able to move within the West Bank and completely deny them access to East Jerusalem. And many Palestinians have to find alternative routes to go around these checkpoints. Now, the fact that there are alternative routes that are much more difficult for Palestinians 
exemplifies that these checkpoints are not for security because if that was the case, then there would not be alternative routes. These checkpoints are put in a manner in order to separate Palestinians from Palestinians, make Palestinian life more and more difficult. And what this overall seeks to do is create a very difficult environment for Palestinians to live in, in an effort to indirectly force the Palestinians to move elsewhere within the OPT, or worse yet, as is the overarching policy of the Israeli occupation, to have the Palestinians leave the Palestinian territory, allowing further and further Israeli annexation. Well, you're listening to 93.6 Ram FM's morning show. Uh, it's talk at 10. Uh, on the line, we have with some Ahmed, who's the program assistant uh, from the Al Haq Human Rights Organization. Well, with some time after time, the issue of checkpoints uh, gets raised, especially by the Palestinian side, as it no doubt infringes on their human rights. What are you doing specifically to address this? Well, Al Haq, as you stated, the Palestinian Human Rights Organization. It was established in 1979 to protect and promote the human rights and rule of law in occupied Palestinian territory. And throughout this time, we have continued to face the Israeli occupation and the movement restrictions that have been used since 1967. And in order to counter these, uh, this imposition and violation of Palestinian human rights, Al-Haq continues to have field workers on the ground documenting and monitoring these checkpoints and collecting information from both victims and eyewitnesses of abuses at these checkpoints, of the harassment that the Palestinians face. And we take this information and use it for advocacy purposes, both internally as well as abroad to third-party states, and the UN in order to raise the awareness of the effect, the impacts of these checkpoints as one of the measures that the Israeli occupation uses to violate Palestinian human rights and continue to deny the Palestinian right to self-determination. Well, the- uh, with some, I'd like to wrap it up with one final uh, question. Apparently, uh, as uh, Many commentators are saying uh, checkpoints on the increase instead of being dismantled. Are Palestinians are uh, simply accepting them as a way of life, or is the resentment building up? The Palestinians will never accept these checkpoints as a way of life. The Palestinians are a resilient people, and they will adapt as need be, but they will continue to remain steadfast in the face of the Israeli occupation. And I feel that both with the help of Palestinian and Israeli human rights organizations, they'll continue to provide support for the Palestinian people to remain steadfast. And these checkpoints will be taken sooner or later, because in the end, these checkpoints are a violation of international law, a violation of the human rights of the Palestinian people. And in order for peace to be achieved in the future, there needs to be justice first. And that justice can only come through the implementation of international law in the occupied Palestinian territory. Well, we'll leave it at that, uh, Wesam. Thank you for chatting with us this morning, and I wish you a very good day. Thank you very much, Bye-bye. Ray. The views expressed on the station do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, the management, or its employees.